back in April of 2017. We were on the train and uh, we were coming from Switzerland actually. We went to kind of travel because we were empty nesters. The kids were in college and we would just started traveling. We thought that would be, we just loved traveling. And, um, and I felt a lump on my neck. And I said to my husband, like, Frank, I have this lump on my neck. He says, maybe you got a cold or something. Then I started getting on Google. Everything was coming up. I had lymphoma, I had thyroid cancer. So I went to the nurse practitioner. She said, well, you lost like 20 pounds. She goes, well, you have a lump on your throat? I said, yeah, I feel it. So she felt it and she's like, oh yeah. There was an era where uh, drugs were being developed to kill cancer cells, but where there really wasn't knowledge as to exactly what those drugs did at the molecular level. And the script flipped in about the year 2000, such that the molecular understanding of cancer informed the creation of a drug and the concept of actually pairing individual patients with an individual therapy based on the specific features of their cancer all came into view. And that led to this terminology or this concept of targeted therapy. The nurse practitioner referred me to the endocrinologist. So I go there, they actually do a biopsy there and they do some blood tests. I said, what do you think is going on? She goes, Denise, I'm not sure what's happening, but something, you're right, something is wrong. It's very challenging to define Tremere Center, but the, in its essence, it's the place where complex clinical trials are conducted within the MGH Cancer Center. This is where we develop new drugs. But at the end of the day, and this is really important to convey, Tremere Center is a, it's really a place of hope. It really is. I mean, this is the place where any cancer patient can come, whether they have newly diagnosed disease, or that could be a patient who has no other treatment options. It's a place for common diseases, such as breast cancer, and it's a place for rare and extremely deadly diseases like anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. I saw my lab results. All my labs were normal. I had nothing going on with my labs. But then I went into Google and I, I looked up anaplastic. And with anaplastic thyroid cancer, your labs are normal. And I looked at that and I said, oh my God, that is me there. You know, I just, um, I was so sad, you know? And so, um, I think I called my husband, Frank, who's been my rock. He's just uh, the greatest guy ever. Um, but he, um, I called him and he's like, you need to calm down. We're gonna go see Dr. Worth. Cause at that point I had to make an appointment with Dr. Worth. I first met Denise more than three years ago when she was first diagnosed with anaplastic thyroid cancer. Anaplastic thyroid cancer is one of the worst cancers that we deal with in oncology. And what was particularly difficult in her case was that she had bulky disease in the neck that couldn't be removed by surgery. So I knew at that time when Dr. Stevens' office did not call me, and it was Dr. Worth's office, that it was um, very serious. And um, so anyway, I, I, um, I remember I made, I was sitting there and I swear I just knitted the whole time. I was just making this scarf I wanted to make and that's what kind of got me through the, the days. The concept behind the Tremere Center from the outset was to embed therapeutics research um, in the strength of the scientific environment that, that surrounds us. Um, that environment is is very powerful if it can be brought to bear directly to cancer patients. So Denise first entered a clinical trial with a drug that we were investigating specifically in anaplastic thyroid cancer. What happened on this clinical trial was that she actually had such a brisk response in the tumor to the drug that she developed a hole in her airway or her trachea that required her to have a tracheostomy placed, and we had to stop the clinical trial drug uh, because of this dire consequence from the therapy. I was in the hospital for about a week after that, and I learned how to use, to, to clean it and to get used to having this trach. And I was so self-conscious, but it was the winter time, so it was okay because I would wear a scarf and nobody would know I've had it on. And 
So I was kind of okay. At that point, Dr. Worth um, came to me and she says, Denise, you know, I have another clinical trial. So I was like, sure, I mean, you know, if this will help other, other people in the future with treating this disease, you know, I have to do this, you know, I have to go through the clinical trial. Patients are not subjects, they're our partners. They do this to get help, but they also do this to contribute to the knowledge that we have about their disease so we can help other patients. And we do not do trials to them, we do trials with them. Our loyalty is to the patients in front of us. I mean, that's, what, that's why we get out of bed in the morning, is to increase the likelihood they can walk away from this problem, or at the very least, live with it. But these patients are also thinking about many, many people they do not know, and who they'll never know. This is the best evidence of altruism in people. For cancer patients to confront what they're confronting, this, this truly life-threatening problem, and maintain that focus on, on what they can do to help others, others who they will never meet. Um, that is just an utterly striking example of the partnership that we have with our patients. I just remember how I felt when I met her because it was just like so much on her plate that day because I also was afraid for her, you know? While Denise was recovering from the tracheostomy and getting better, um, well enough for it to consider treatment again, of course her thyroid cancer began to grow and progress again. So I was terrified that she was, <laughs> I don't mean to break up. Um, I was terrified that she wasn't going to do well. Um, and she did. It was a drug where we had no clue that it may work with anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. We tried it in one patient, one patient. We saw it works. We immediately recognized what's happening, sat down with the sponsor of the trial and said, why don't we treat more patients? And this is how Denise was able to get access to that drug. And now you're faced with a patient who came to you with fear in their eyes. And you can actually tell them two years later, there is no evidence of disease. You can tell them, no, you don't have to get your affairs in order. You should get your travel plans in order. You should think about your life. Usually I do this. Come on, babe. <laughs> My cancer was very, very rare, and it was basically untreatable. But there's always hope, you know, you can't give up. I am under observation. No treatment, nothing. And I feel fantastic. I feel absolutely like myself. I do my yoga, I do my walking. I am so, so grateful for every day. I don't take anything for granted. It's, it's truly a miracle that I'm still here. I'm, I'm gonna say it, it really is.